Today on Adventure Guides, we're headed for San Diego to fly fish for massive mako sharks and go kayak fishing for spotted bay bass in a place you'd least expect it. First, we'll paddle out on San Diego Bay with pioneer kayak fishing guide Jim Sammons, who commonly catches more than 100 spotted bay and sand bass in a morning of casting plastics. Then I'll join fly fishing guide Conway Bowman to stalk mako sharks with a fly rod. When these monsters get near the boat, you realize that they're hunting you more than the other way around. It's all makos and kayaks on today's episode of Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. Hello and welcome to Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. I'm your host, John Deach. Today we're here in San Diego, checking in on a couple of guides who use kayaks to go fishing, Jim Sammons and Matt Moyer. Sammons runs his outfitting business, La Jolla Kayak Fishing Adventures, out of La Jolla. But on his days off, you'll often find him here, on nearby San Diego Bay, preparing his kayak for a morning of bass fishing. What up, Matty? What up, Jim? God knows we don't guide for the money. <laughs> it's for the chicks, man. <laughs> for Jim and his buddy Matt, fishing and guiding from kayaks is just another day at the office. For me, the hardest part about being a guide, a kayak fishing guide, is getting up in the morning. <laughs> we are really an early morning sport. Jim Sammons began fishing when he was only two years old. He spent part of his career as a full-time truck driver before he decided to quit his day job and start his own company, doing what he loves. Once I'm there, man, there's nothing like paddling out in the dark with the bioluminescence in the water. Everything's glowing, bait fish are shooting off. It looks like fireworks going off underneath your boat. Well, of course, a highlight for me fishing today was fishing with my good friend, Matt. My handle is Moyer the Fish Destroyer because I like to catch fish. We don't get a chance to fish together a lot, uh, particularly as just friends fishing together. A lot of times when we're fishing together, he and I are both kind of herding clients because Matt basically comes out and helps me out on days. And uh, so it's, it's, we always have fun. <laughs> it's amazing to be right here, you know, in the middle of San Diego, downtown San Diego right here. You know, very underutilized fishery. And you can be out here just catch fish after fish after fish. It's urban fishing at its best. A nice chunky spot. Real pretty colors on this one. Finally, in the dry spell ends. He's pretty deep. Nice fish. These guys have been puking up uh, razor clams. If you can even see that, there's a really small one. And uh, here's a bunch that the other one puked up on my boat. And that's basically what you're imitating. Something's just laying on the bottom, has this little tiny thing sticking out. That's why the grubs and the worms work so well. These guys are sitting on the bottom and just waiting for stuff to come tumbling by them in the current. Kayak fishing does open up that whole light tackle thing. Uh, my biggest thresher shark uh, to line ratio, I got a 67 pound thresher shark on six pound test. So I like that light line aspect of kayak fishing because again, the boat itself is drag. So you can get pulled wherever that fish wants to take you. Using technology like sonar and live bait tanks, salmons and other kayak fishermen can take up to four hours to land big game from their kayaks. I consider myself more of a big game kayak fisherman. I mean, that's my favorite thing to fish for. My first marlin I ever caught off my kayak dragged me eight miles straight out to sea. When you're fishing for, for big game fish, particularly bill fish, uh, thresher sharks, that sort of thing, there's a certain amount of that adrenaline factor. You against the fish, you're in a small boat. You know, it, it's really just you and him. Coming up on Adventure Guides, we'll embark on the most exciting fishing experience of my life. Fly fishing for mako sharks with guide Conway Bowman. 
Then we'll return to San Diego to see if Moyer the Fish Destroyer can finally catch up to his friend and boss, Jim Sammons. Welcome back to Adventure Guides, Fishing Edition. The way you do a drop shot, which hook on the line, so it goes in the eye and back out the eye. Let's do an over, overhand knot, just like so, and then you pull the hook back through that loop. And just cinch it, cinch it down. It's just a Palomar knot. So you got the torpedo sinker underneath your lure, or underneath your hook there. While Jim Sammons and his pal Matt slam spotted bay bass on their kayaks back in San Diego Bay, Conway Bowman and I head out to hunt mako sharks using fly rods. Conway Bowman is a celebrity in the fishing world, pioneering the sport of mako fly fishing. He's put everything at risk, including his life, for his love of catching massive mako sharks on 12 and 14 weight fly rods. Located on Mission Bay, Bowman Blue Water Guides and Outfitters exclusively uses fly fishing gear to catch and release mako sharks up to 600 pounds in the waters just a few miles off the coast when they come here to spawn from August through October. I started guiding here in San Diego on the salt water um, in 1990. I started in a 16 and a half foot aluminum boat with a tiller control motor. I would go 25 miles offshore with that thing. And uh, those are some really hard lessons learned because I got into some dicey situations with some pretty big sharks. San Diego is a mecca for saltwater fishing and more specifically fly fishing. You know, we have great warm water currents in the summertime that come up. The best uh, fish to catch here on a fly rod is a mako shark because it's readily available. Uh, and there's great numbers of them here. And they're within, you know, two miles of the beach. There's no place in the world you can actually do that. It has taken Conway more than 18 years to perfect his guiding skills, so he is not about to give away any secrets. I'm not going to tell you exactly where I catch mako sharks, because if I did that, um, everybody would be sitting on my spot. But I will tell you this, there's an area in San Diego called the Nine Mile Bank, and somewhere within that Nine Mile Bank that runs south to north, you're going to find great mako spots, okay? And it's very important. The Nine Mile Bank is the key place. I'll let you figure it out where to go fishing. Of all the saltwater fish in these waters, as well as multiple species of sharks, Conway has his eye only on the mako. The reason I prefer makos to blues is because, first of all, mako is, is, is a super strong dynamic fighter. And they're the second fastest fish in the ocean, 60 miles an hour. So once you hook them, they're going to take off. And this is it. This is the, the main thing. They jump 20 feet in the air. Blue sharks are great, they, they pull hard, but a mako shark oh, yeah. is by far uh, a much more superior game fish. Before I knew it, we were surrounded by makos hunting the scent from the chum bucket. Conway casts the hookless teaser and tells me to cast just in front of it. Yeah, drop it. Script, script, script. Leave it. Suddenly, Conway gets me into my first mako shark. Oh, there you go. Drive it deep. <laughs> makos, baby! Because the mako is an apex predator, it is not used to being hunted, so at first it hardly knows that it's hooked on so my fly. What you're saying is now that he's turning towards me, I better get off the bow. Yeah, you're in a very vulnerable position. Yeah, tell me about it. Here he comes. Come on, baby. <laughs> Jump back here. The key is you want to keep your shoulders square to this guy and watch your toes walking around. All right. And up here, drop your rod to the right. Tip him over. Wow, look at those teeth. Oh, no. Okay. Well, yeah. Good the other side. We're going to this way. Any energy, I can tell. Wow, look at those teeth. Whoa. Using his skills as a master Mako guide, Conway employs the use of a release stick to disengage the fly and lets the shark go. Sweet. Nice. That was fun. That's awesome. Thanks, Conway. We're probably going to have a lot more room. Next is your fish. Oh, cool. Right on. Awesome. Right, yeah. So it's a lot of technique between the guide and the, and the angler. It's, it's teamwork. And yeah. to have an angler that can make the right cast. And a lot of times it's not right. su a super long cast, but it's an accurate cast. Right. Boom, you're on. So. And it's addictive as hell, man. Let's go Sharks are amazing killing machines. 
They can detect blood in the water at the rate of one part per million, which is like zeroing in on a few drops of blood at the other side of a swimming pool. What is the chum bucket? Basically, a chum bucket is, is, is a bucket that's full of kind of fresh cut tuna carcasses, you know, maybe a little bit of tuna blood in there. And that is essential in get, it, it's essential for getting the, the sharks to the boat. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Got it set, good. Hard, 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 there you go. Yeah! <laughs> He's just picking up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. And if you really think about this, who's being hunted? The sharks are coming to us. They're finding the boat. They're finding something to eat. So, in fact, we're the ones being hunted by the sharks. And I think that's probably the most intriguing thing about this fishery. Coming up on Adventure Guides, we'll check in on kayak fishing guide Jim Sammons and his buddy Matt in San Diego Bay. And we'll return to these shark-infested waters to witness Conway hooking the big mako. But can he land it? Don't go away. Adventure Guides Fishing Edition will be right back. While Conway and I battle big makos, kayak fishing outfitter Jim Sammons and part-time guide Matt Moyer fish for sand and spotted bay bass in San Diego Bay. As the day progresses, the fish keep biting finally giving Matt a chance to catch some respectable bass and live up to his self-acclaimed title, Moyer the Fish Destroyer. Finally. And why did you get bit? Because your hand wasn't on the rod. <laughs> <laughs> Kayak fishing is one of the fastest growing segments in angling, providing a much cheaper means of access to local fisheries than larger boats. For salmons, that means access to this unusual urban fishery. This spot's uh, very special because of, probably mostly because of the scenery. You got, uh, you got the, you're, you're right in Coronado. Um, you basically, you got the Navy, you got the San Diego skyline, Petco Park, and then you got the beautiful Coronado Bay, Bay Bridge. It's just a great place to fish. Have, um, you been, have you been schooled enough today? Yes, oh did I. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. That's it on in, man. That was a fun morning. It's not always about catching fish. I fished with my best friend Jim Sammons today, and you know we had a great time. And I think that uh, if you want to get into the sport, that's your main objective: is just to have a good time and uh, enjoy your friends. <laughs> Twenty years ago, the populations of bass in this bay were disappearing, but today, urban fisheries like San Diego are making a big comeback thanks in part to more anglers and outfitters using catch and release in the salt. For guides like Jim and Matt, that's all good news. What is the chum bucket? The chum bucket is, is basically what brings the fish to the boat. Basically, a chum bucket is, is, is a bucket that's full of kind of fresh cut tuna carcasses, maybe a little bit of tuna blood in there. It's essential for getting the, the sharks to the boat. Um, you hang it over the side of the boat, you set your chum slick and you wait for those fish to come to you. It's a very simple, uh, traditional way to fish, more specifically in salt water, and it's very effective. I mean, it brings the fish to the boat. Once the fish are at the boat, they're probably not gonna go anywhere. While fishing for bass in San Diego Bay is a blast, just offshore lies the Mako fishery that Captain Conway Bowman rules. And I gotta say, catching a Mako on a fly is like a drug. As soon as I had my first taste, I wanted more. While I'd promised Conway that it would be his turn to fish, fish greed got the best of me. Once these fish come to the boat, you know, it's, you're, you're making that cast and it's, it's a really high percentage shot they're gonna hit that fly. Um, the key is setting the hook correctly, doing a really good strip strike, letting that fish know that they're hooked, so really sticking it to them, letting the fish get away from the boat, letting them run, letting them jump, and then from, from that point on, it's, it's a slug fest. That, that's where, you know, the fly angler uh, the fly anglers, you know, fish fighting skills kind of come into play. So, and sometimes you lose, and sometimes you lose. Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is fun. That's a capital awesome. F. 
See that cake, man? Yeah. Look at that little Mako. Little guy was fun. Fun? That's, that's, that's a good fly ride. Here he goes. Right there. Let's try to make another run on him. Good job, Johnny. Texture. I tried a really cool other one, though. He's got a lot of energy left. Yeah. Look at that guy. Nice. Oh. <laughs> By the time the bigger Makos come to the boat, I'm exhausted from landing several 50 to 80 pound Makos. We had some smaller blue sharks come in right off the bat. And of course, uh, I had John catch those because I wanted to basically keep all the Makos for myself, uh, all the big Makos. Conway, who knew that the bigger fish would come in later that day, has pulled the wool over my eyes. Oh, John, look at, look at this Mako. God, he showed up right. Oh, it's, it's over 100 pounds, dude. So this is the one that, that I've been waiting for all day. Next, on Adventure Guides, Conway Bowman hooks a massive Mako shark on a fly. But can he land it? Stay tuned for more Adventure Guides Fishing Edition coming right up. Welcome back to Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. We're here off the San Diego coast, fly fishing for Mako sharks with guide Conway Bowman. Oh, John, look at, look at this Mako. God, he showed up right. That is a big oh, it's, it's over 100 pounds, dude. So this is the one that, that I've been waiting for all day. Conway uses the hookless teaser to get this 120-pound Mako psyched to take a fly. He switches to a fly rod, makes a cast, and it's game on. OK, I need, I need to hook him like I need to hook him right now, OK. He's got it. Oh, and broke him off. The big Mako eats Conway's fly, but its vicious head shake is too much for the wire leader. With other big Makos now surrounding the boat, Conway picks up a nearby pre rigged fly rod and instantly hooks up with another yeah, big Mako. Yeah, we got him. Oh, that time you hooked him good. There he goes. Sweet. All right, there we go. <laughs> Got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See that pressure I'm putting on him? 100% all the time. Yep. But with this rod, you can't put more than probably 10 pounds of pressure on a 20 pound chip. But the advantage is that softer tip protects that tip. Uh, this is the end game right here, guys. This is what it's all about. Just give it to him, man. Don't let him have the upper hand on you. I got his head up, man. That's what I wanted to do. Now you stick it to him. So he burns some energy on that run, and oh, yeah. See how he gets vertical like that? Yeah. That's where he breaks your chip. Yeah. <laughs> this is the hardest thing. These are the hardest fighting fish in the ocean. I don't care what anybody else says. Look at that guy. God darn. Oh, that is. Whew. Okay, now that I got him up, I see he's going to sound again. But each time I'm gaining some line on him, which is overall, a mega shark is is probably one of the hardest fighting fish in the ocean, not only on a fly rod, but on conventional gear as well. Um, they're mean, they're freaking nasty, they're not afraid of you, and they eat a fly like you wouldn't believe it. And they'll come up, hit it off the surface, 
And once you hook them, it's a slug fest. And oftentimes that fight can take up to two hours if you get a big one. But you got to see a mako shark in the water swimming at you. And when that fish kind of circles the boat, he's rolling over on his side and he's looking at you with that big black eye going, let's go, dude, let's go. You know, I want to take you on. That's what it's all about. So when I bring him back around the front, I want you to hold steady pressure on him. Like, right now, grab the rod. Right. Maximum pressure, right now. Ah. Missed on that. Ah, good. Whew. Took the fly, but who cares, dude? Woo! The reason I love fly fishing for mako sharks is because, you know, it's the ultimate challenge in terms of um, kind of the fly angler battling a really, really large game fish, one that's going to challenge um, everything you got. As we got back to the dock, after an exhilarating day catching and releasing mako sharks, seeing this massive mako shark recently killed reminded Conway and I of the importance of releasing these important apex predators. You're in their area, you're in their, in their neighborhood, and they rule it, and they're hunting you down. And that's the unique thing about this. And uh, San Diego offers that just a couple of miles offshore. I mean, we're, we're surrounded by mako sharks here. And uh, it is by far the un most unique fly fishery in the world. Mako sharks are a unique species that face major problems. Scientists say that as apex predators, the big makos are susceptible to the mercury in the tons of fish they have eaten. The mercury accumulates in their bodies, stunts their growth, and threatens their lifespan. By catching and releasing makos, Conway is doing his part as a fishing guide to help balance the marine ecosystem here off the Southern California coast. Hey, thanks for coming along on a great day of fishing off the San Diego coast. I'm your host, John Deach. We'll see you next time on Adventure Guides Fishing Edition right here on the Outdoor Channel. Each week, Adventure Guides travels the globe in search of the world's best outfitters. To find out more about Adventure Guides, go to www.outdoorchannel.com.